Welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Christy and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many sessions happening. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Oklahoma State University. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. I am with Oklahoma State University, and I'm going to dive right in since I only have six minutes. Um, if you guys are familiar with OSU um, or not familiar with OSU, we are located right in between Oklahoma City and Tulsa. It is um, definitely a unique town because when you think of college town, that is what Stillwater, Oklahoma is. We have about 22,000 undergraduate students. And um, what's unique about that is we have about 50,000 total people in Stillwater. So really, you go anywhere, it's kind of the college scene, and we call it the cowboy family. No matter where you go in town, you see a lot of orange. And we have a pretty good representation of out-of-state students, about 26 out of state, uh, percent of out-of-state students um, over across all 50 states. Um, we are also a land-grant um, college, and we have the highest, uh, represent some of the highest tier research um, that you guys are can be interested in. If you guys are looking to do um, any of that intense research um, for your studies here. Um, with that research, we do have a lot of majors to offer across campus, over 200 majors. So really, if you guys know what you wanna do right now, fantastic. You guys can definitely find that passion here um, and explore all opportunities. If you're not sure what you wanna do, you can hopefully fall in line with that. Um, we have some great facilities. Um, pictured below is our new McKnight Center for Performing Arts. We also have some very new buildings on campus too, um, such as our Education and Human Sciences building that's located on the left of this picture as well. Um, some other things that I would like to highlight too with our different types of majors and academic colleges is that our new uh, College of Ag, we are building a brand new facility for there. It should be ready in fall of 2023 which is going to be fantastic. It's about a $50 million facility. So it's really the top of the line places that you wanna be. Um, with the ag, it's very unique because we do have a whole kind of ag facility, ag area uh, northwest of campus. So we have an equine center, a swine barn. So if you guys are um, really into ag, that will really feel your kind of um, liking there. We also are very active with our architecture and engineering programs. We have an uh, Endeavor Lab, which is pictured here. That Endeavor Lab is for undergraduate research. It's really mirrored at the graduate student level, so it's very hands-on learning with everything. Great opportunities to get those job skills for you guys and make sure that you guys are staying on top of those studies, but also getting that experience in the classroom to make sure you guys can get that ideal job once you graduate. Also some great programs in our School of Business. Um, I was a marketing major myself, so I'm very biased towards this, but this is our brand new building that opened up in 2018. So again, these places on campus are places you wanna be on campus. It's really not a dread to go to class because we have some great facilities and great professors and advisors that can help you guys along the way. Now for our application, I'll go over this real quick. We are not on the Common App, so you guys do have to actually go to our website and complete that application. Um, some basic stuff that you guys can see there is our you know, transcript, test scores. Um, we do have a $40 application fee. And we also um, ask you guys to do two short essays and a leadership component. That does double up as your scholarship application. That's why we do not participate in the Common App. We try to get to know you guys a little bit more on our actual application. So hopefully you guys are going through that process. Um, very with us uh, with us soon, or if you haven't started it yet, um, definitely maybe do that tonight after you're inspired by this great presentation. For our admission criteria, you guys can see some opportunities there uh, to get in automatically. We have some class rank opportunities. We also have um, a GPA and a, a test score, as well as just a test score. So really great. If you guys meet any of those, you get in automatically. Welcome to the Cowboy family. It just works out very easy for you guys. 
Now, if you guys don't have the highest test score that you would like, or maybe um, you just don't, um, you know, maybe you haven't been able to test because of COVID, that's also an option too. We do have that where you guys can go through a review process. This is our potential, um, our way to see the potential in you guys to be successful here without just judging you on um, a test score. So again, we are test optional for admission. So if you guys do not like your test score or have not been able to test, please apply. You can indicate that on your application with that. Now, you guys are obviously at a state audience here. We do have a great out of state achievement scholarship. It is strictly merit based. So there is no competition whatsoever for this scholarship. If you have a certain test score that you guys can see there, as well as a 3.0 GPA, then you guys get this scholarship. That is good for four years and it takes right off the cost of tuition and fees. The great news with this scholarship is we will take y'all's test scores until August after y'all graduate from high school. So really you have a whole another year to take the test to try to get the highest you would like. And again, with the test score option there, that's great if you guys are great test takers. If you're not, we have a GPA only option there too. This is for students who haven't been able to test, but if you have been able to test and you're not happy with that test score, you can still hopefully get some money just based off those um, high uh, achieving grades that you've had in high school. So definitely go through the process. Hopefully we can get you guys some money on that. We do give out a lot of other scholarships too. This is the one I wanted to showcase, but we give out them for, you know, School of Business gives them out, engineering, architecture, all those majors and all those programs give out scholarships that are going to be looking at not only merit-based things, but also everything you've done in high school, maybe community service or student council. Any of those things are great opportunities to get some funding for you guys. And if you guys are used to doing a lot of stuff in high school, this is a really great opportunity for you guys here at OSU because we have over 600 student organizations right now. So Really anything that you guys are interested in, if it's major wise or anything, you guys have some great opportunities for you there. Um, we do have America's Greatest Homecoming this week. I was gonna highlight some of that stuff before I end here. Um, this is some pictures of that, as well as a walk around. So definitely wanna get you guys there. Um, we are doing normal campus tours too. So we definitely want you guys to come on campus and I will put my contact information at the very end of this, but I thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, appreciate it, go Pokes. Thank you. Next, we will have Oklahoma City University. Hi, my name is Leslie Welch and I'm with Oklahoma City University. Thank you so much for taking time to learn about all of the different campuses and colleges um, here tonight. OCU is a private university in the heart of Oklahoma City and we are considered a small liberal arts college. Um, we are affiliated with the United Methodist Church and open to all faiths. Now, Oklahoma City is the capital city of Oklahoma, and it has been named a top 25 best city for millennial job seekers. Our students enjoy a lot of different activities around town, including professional sporting teams, uh, like the Oklahoma City Thunder. The arts and cultural districts have several theaters that our students are able to perform. And then we have the River Sports Adventure in the Boathouse District. This is one of three Olympic training sites for the rowing, kayaking, and canoeing. And all of that is within about 10 minutes of campus. OCU is a community where you're going to be known. Your classes and your labs are going to be taught by professors, not graduate assistants providing you with the opportunities to build relationships and, and a network that's gonna last a lifetime. You can see from the info on the screen um, that the student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Average class size is about 17. As you talk with your professors, you're really gonna get a sense of how much they really care and desire to help you succeed. Our pre-professional programs have an 85% acceptance rate into professional schools, medical, dental, all of those type things. Our nursing program is ranked as one of the top 50 in the country. And then we are one of the top 10 most represented universities on Broadway. So lots of things there. College wouldn't be college without that campus that, um, tradition and that atmosphere. And we have a lot of rich traditions um, for you to be involved in. A few of our big ones, um, we have the lip sync battle that happens during fall homecoming week. That's this week. Um, we have love not hate day. And then we have our children's miracle network dance marathon. 
We do have over 80 student-led organizations, including a robust Greek life. We have the intramural sports and then the fitness center um, is available to all of our students. Our athletic program is part of the NAIA, allowing us to award scholarships to our athletes. Um, we have about 22 varsity sports, including rowing and women's wrestling. One of the big things about OCU is that we've won a national championship in at least one sport every year for the last 26 years. So you've got that 70 national championships and counting. As far as academics go, our, the Petrie College of Arts and Sciences houses the majority of our liberal arts, including our STEM, humanities, and visual arts. Two of our newest degrees include esports management and game design and animation. The Minder School of Business has the same accreditation as Harvard, and our Kramer School of Nursing offers everything from a BSN to a PhD in nursing. We do have an honors program at OCU, and it's a university-wide program that allows you to collaborate cross-disciplinary learning communities. So you'll be engaging in seminar courses with some of the university's best um, dedicated professors. There is an application process, and that will go live on, in November. OCU is probably best known for our performing arts. The Ann Lacey um, School of American Dance and Entertainment is ranked as one of the top 10 dance schools in the nation. We have over 70 alumni who are performing or have performed on Broadway. You do have to audition uh, to be a part of this school and you can find that information on our website. If you're interested in musical theater, composition, performance, any of those, you're gonna wanna audition for the School of Music. Um, we are a no cut program. Um, this year, we do have pre-screens that are necessary for um, musical theater and vocal performance. So the School of Theater is one of the fastest growing programs in the country. And I will say that all three schools, dance, music, and theater work really well together to produce hundreds of production events each year. So you are gonna get the chance to perform. As far as the admission process goes, we take a holistic approach looking at you as the person not just a score. So we're gonna look at class rigor. We're gonna look at extracurricular involvement, service, leadership experience, and what your recommenders have to say about you. Um, to apply, you need to submit an application with an essay, um, a recommendation letter from your high school counselor, your official high school transcript and $55 application fee or a fee waiver. You can apply online through our website or through the Common App, and your submitted application is going to serve for both your admissions and your scholarship consideration. We do know uh, that college is an investment, and we work hard to make it affordable for you. Last year alone, we awarded over $34 million in financial aid, and we have several opportunities for you to receive scholarships, including because we're test optional, we've moved our automatic merit scholarships to a scoreless or GPA only grid. And these scholarships are renewable all four years as long as you maintain a 3.0 GPA. Finally, we're offering uh, campus tours and uh, I will put my contact information into the chat. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need more information. Thanks again for coming. Have a good evening. Thank you. Next, we will have Missouri Southern State University. So good evening, and thank you for taking the time this evening to learn a little bit more about Missouri Southern. I'm Jason Stockbridge, and I am your admissions counselor here at Missouri Southern. I'm based out of Tulsa. And if you would like to contact the Office of Admissions or myself, please do so on the left. And on the right, if you can, please go ahead and scan this QR code or copy this web address, and this will take you to our prospect card. So when I finish my presentation, if you would like to fill that out, please go ahead and scan that QR code. And I will leave this up for a few minutes so you can do that. So why should you pick Missouri Southern? The faculty to student ratio is 19 to one. So you're gonna have that undivided attention inside and outside the classroom, small class sizes, and the opportunity to meet new friends from all over the world. 
But most importantly, we offer in-state tuition even in Texas. That's right, even in Texas. And this is called the Lion Pride Discount. And this is offered to the uh, to students that live in the eight states that border Missouri plus Texas, Hawaii, and the four islands. And also we have new exciting MOSO merits uh, freshman scholarships based on your high school cumulative uh, GPA and your SAT and ACT scores. The premier is the high tier at $5,000 per year. Gold is the middle tier at 3,500 and green is the low tier at 2,000. And we super score the SAT and the ACT. So if you're right on line between two scholarships, that's gonna bump you up into the next bracket. We also have competitive scholarships, so foundations, performance, and athletics. So we're division two. So whatever you get for athletics, you get for athletics. So whenever you get for academic, you get for academic. We don't split the two, it's two different scholarships. And also we have honors scholarships and you have to apply for those by February 15th and must meet one of the following requirements listed below. Our city is perfect for college life. Mosos campus is located in the beautiful Ozark Mountains right off of Route 66. And Joplin is the fourth largest city in the state of Missouri. And we offer concerts, sporting events, and nightlife. Top programs and degrees include business administration, criminal justice, teacher education, health professions, and biology. With criminal justice, we have our own shooting range on site where we train all the police officers in Joplin, some Oklahoma state troopers and some Arkansas state troopers. With teacher education, we just added on a new master's degree for teacher education. So if you're interested in that, that's definitely something to look into. Health professions, dental hygiene is our leading program. And yes, we offer free teeth cleanings. Let me say that one more time. We offer free teeth cleanings here at Missouri Southern State. So when you're getting your teeth clean, you might be sitting next to the president when, he get, uh, when he's getting his teeth clean. And also biology includes the pre-professional uh, degrees as well. So MOSO has over 140 different majors to choose from for certificates, associates, and bachelor's degrees, and seven master's degrees. So you're probably wondering what the admissions requirements are. So here at Missouri Southern State, you have to have a 2.25 cumulative high school GPA, a 21 on the ACT, or a 1060 on the SAT, or be in the top 50 percentile of your graduating class. Most schools, you have to meet all four of those requirements. With us, you only have to meet one. So if you're a senior and you like everything that's been presented so far, I would say go ahead and apply today at mssu.edu backslash apply. Estimated tuition costs for one year, and this is with that in-state Lion Pride discount, this includes your tuition. Fees are already included, that's why you see a zero there, and also room and board is included. So roughly the annual cost is gonna be $14,712 for one year, and this does not include your scholarships or your financial aid. So it's not gonna be more than that, it's gonna be way less than that as well. And also we have five housing uh, dorms and five meal plans to choose from to fluctuate uh, cost. So for the housing, we have traditional apartment suites and quads. The apartments and suites fill up very quickly by the end of the spring semester. So if you're looking at getting into a particular class or a particular dorm, I would suggest going ahead and submit your application today. Submit your transcript, your dual credit transcript and your test scores. Because once you submit those and are admitted to Missouri Southern, that starts the ball rolling for housing and financial aid. Excuse me. So Rory and I would like to know, are you ready to roar in 2022? We hope you are. So if so, please register for one of our key events called the Lion Pride Visit Days. And we do have one coming up on November the 5th from 9 to 1230. And this is where you can get a complimentary lunch for you and your guest, and you can register at the website provided. If you can't make those, we do have some dates coming up in the spring. And also we have some campus tours as well. And these are offered Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. And on Fridays in the fall, 10 a.m. and in the spring, 1 p.m. 
My information, my contact information is in the lower right-hand corner. I will put this in the chat box, but we're looking forward to seeing you on campus. And as always, go Lions. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have the University of Tulsa. Hi, uh, my name is Julie Salisbury and I am with the University of Tulsa and I am located in Houston, Texas. So unlike my friend that is in uh, Tulsa right now, I am from Tulsa, but now currently live in Houston. And so I recruit for the Houston area and South Texas students. So thank you for being here tonight. I will also add my information um, in the chat after I'm done. So. So just some quick facts here. We have around 39, um, less than 4,000 total enrollment, less around 3,000 undergraduate students. We are a four-year private university located in the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, we are about, oh, from Houston, we're about eight hours north. And from Oklahoma City, which uh, my coworker from OCU, we're about an hour and a half from there as well. And we are the second largest city in Oklahoma. Um, so we are a liberal arts institution. We have all of your fine arts, um, but we also have uh, majors in engineering, uh, cybersecurity, nursing, all your STEM, um, all your STEM programs. So we kind of have a um, really eclectic group of majors that you can participate in. We are a division one sports. So that's super fun. I know we played Oklahoma State not too long ago. My husband's an Oklahoma State grad. So that was a house divided, but super fun. Um, so that gets the student spirit and uh, really buzzing on campus. So that's really, really an uh, interesting thing. We have a student to faculty ratio of about 11 to one, and our classroom size is about 21 to one. That will differ on what your major is, but for the most part, we keep it about 21 to one. Um, and let's see, so our student life, we are a traditional campus. We have residential life, we have dorms, um, we have apartments on campus, about 80% of our students stay on campus for all four years. Um, Everybody likes to eat. So we have, you know, that's our student union right there, which you can go to get different restaurants. I believe Pizza Hut is in the picture right there. That is pretty much where all of our students hang out when it is, you know, between classes that you'll always see activity um, going on in the student union. Um, for sleeping, you can see they're not really sleeping, but they're inviting you to um, come take a tour of campus. And so we have many different sorts of, um, residential halls, we have co-ed, we have suite style. And then for our upperclassmen, we have apartments on campus as well. So the cheer section right there, we're playing Wichita State. And that was one of our last games that we got to play before the uh, pandemic hit and we beat them and it was, it cleared the bleachers and it was just super fun. So our students really um, enjoy the challenges of the classroom, but also enjoy the fun and um, exciting experience with um, sports and we also have over 250 student organizations. So I like to think that we have almost something for everyone. And if there's not something that you see that you would really like to be involved in that maybe was at your high school, we encourage you to bring that to the student council and be like, hey, we would really like to do this. Um, and there's a petition and just some forms you need to fill out that you can start your own organization if you want it to. So when you are applying to the University of Tulsa, we have um, a holistic review. So we don't have any set requirements. We are also test optional. So as admission counselors, we are really hands-on. We get to know our families, we get to know our students. Um, and so we kind of do this process and everything is kind of cyclical. So when you are applying, we have the Common App and we have our Tulsa application. Up until November 1st, we, are, we do have an app fee waiver. 
So when I'm reviewing applications, I'm going to look at your transcripts. We are test optional, like I said, so you can submit your test scores if you think they will be great. Or you can be like, you know what, I had a, you know, a bad day and I, that test doesn't really represent who I am. And so you can decline to send that. So I say all this to say we go through this whole process with you. And then when you decide to become a member of the University of Tulsa, you will be handed off to the Student Success Center which will take you the rest of the way through this journey at TU. So we have student success coaches that are assigned to you that will help you with you know, any sort of support or resources you need. They are there to check on your academic health, your mental health, your social health, and kind of navigate this whole new journey for you because college is supposed to be fun. So we wanna make sure that we have all of these resources for you to have. You also have peer uh, and alumni mentors that are there for you as well, because just talking to one person may not be, you know, you may want a different opinion or you may want to bounce some stuff off by somebody maybe your own age or somebody that's gone through the process. So we, uh, we have those as well for you. And then career and professional development coaches that are there to get you internships. Um, they're there to help you with interview questions. They're there to help you kind of know how to dress, how to present yourself. And so they're there for you the entire time as well. And then they will help you even after you graduate. And then we have health and financial well-being advisors because who needs help when they graduate and they have a job and they have money and you need to know how to, you know, invest that. I did. So we have that situation as well. So this is some of our outcomes. We have a 93% placement rate across the board. We have all this information on our website and I hope that you definitely come and uh, visit it. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna put my information at the bottom. I encourage you all to visit these campuses that are talking to you right now. Thank you for letting me have this opportunity and I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Next, we will have Webster University. All right, hello everyone. Welcome, thank you for having us. My name is Morella and I'm an admissions representative at Webster University. I've actually already thrown my contact information in the chat. I've also thrown in the link to this presentation. This is actually a live webpage. There's some clickable links that I won't get to today. I'd really like you to bookmark that page, come back to it as many times as you need um, and really dive into this presentation. So for those of you who don't know, Webster University is located in Webster Groves. It's an area of St. Louis, Missouri. We're about 20 minutes away from downtown St. Louis. So very close to all the fun that downtown offers, um, cards, games, blues games, all the fun that comes with um, a big city, but in a small little historic safe neighborhood. Um, I like to call it a little hidden gem that is Webster Groves. We are a private four-year institution. We're actually a very small school. We have about 2,100 full-time undergraduate students. So what we offer are those small classroom sizes. We cap classes at 25 students. When I went to Webster and still find this to be true today, you have about 15 students in class with you. Uh, nine to one student to teacher ratio constantly somebody available to talk to you. You're really going to get to know your professors. It's a very intimate feel in class. You get to know your professors and your classmates um, and a very hands-on experience. Some of these pictures here are actually, actually all of them are from our classrooms at Webster. So you can see how hands-on it is, how involved our professors are with their students. We offer over 120 different majors at Webster. I like to say it's a little something for everyone. I don't have time to click into each of these different departments today. Um, you guys can look through it, but some of our popular majors are things like cybersecurity, criminal justice. Um, we have musical theater and acting, um, animation, games and game design. Um, we're one of the few schools that have a wig, costume and makeup design too. So tons to choose from at Webster. Um, we really try to help people find their fit. Webster for a small school offers tons of clubs and organizations. We actually have over 70 clubs and organizations. You can click on this link to find out more. Um, there are religious organizations. There's an acapella group. Um, there, there's a multicultural group as well. So tons to choose from. If nothing on this list interests you, all you have to do is find 10 other people that like the same thing and you can create your own club. So if you're really into chicken nuggets and you find 10 other people who love chicken nuggets, you guys have a chicken nuggets club. So tons to do on campus. Um, always have fun lectures. We have great people visit. We've had people like Terry Cruz and Jamila Jamil on campus. Uh, so tons to do there. And we do a lot of really fun stuff for our students. During finals and midterms, we bring puppies and kittens from the local shelters and help everyone relax. So tons to do on campus, a really great atmosphere in a small tight-knit community as well. 
when I say something for everyone, I really mean it. On top of everything else, we're also a D3 athletic school. So if you're someone that plays sports in high school and you'd like to continue that in college, we have those options for you. These are the men's sports that we offer. And these are the women's sports that we offer as well. We're a member of the St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. We do compete and we do really well. This guy right here is our mascot. He's the Gorlock. He's a made up creature. He has the horns of a buffalo, the paws of a cheetah, and the face of a St. Bernard. And he is on a BuzzFeed article about the weirdest college campus mascots. We are very proud of him. If you are living on campus here at Webster, which if you're out of state, you're required to live on campus for the first two years, you're gonna be in our nice, modern, comfortable dorms. There's actually a, a virtual 360 housing tour in this link right here, um, but it's you and a roommate and then you share your bathroom with your suite mates next door. So not 20 people on a floor sharing a bathroom. We give you privacy. We offer you things like free laundry on campus as well. Um, I highly encourage you to take this virtual tour and, and get to see the dorms a little better. We also have study abroad. So Webster is actually a global university. We have locations across four different continents. And what makes our study abroad so amazing is that everything's the same for you. You're actually going to Webster University. So your tuition, your scholarships, your financial aid, it all follows you. Um, we actually pay for your first round trip ticket for you to go as well. So we highly encourage students to take advantage of this opportunity to study abroad, um, really immerse themselves in another culture. All your classes are in English, so nothing to worry about there either. Applying is super simple. There's three different ways you can do it. You can apply online at our website. We never charge a fee for our application and it's super easy to fill out. There's also the Common app and the College Coalition app. We take any of those options. We will take your high school transcript and we are test optional. So if you have a great score, awesome. If you um, are worried about your score, you don't have to um, turn that in and we won't worry about it either. Um, in addition to that, we have rolling admissions. We never have a deadline. So whenever you fill out the application, we will go ahead and take it. And we're one of the schools that makes it really easy to transfer credit. So if you're transferring credits from another institution, as long as it's accredited, we will take that. Um, so tons of ways to apply. It's very easy. Financial aid, Webster actually offers very generous merit-based scholarships. You don't have to apply for these scholarships. We automatically consider you for them once you apply. They range from $13,000 all the way to $19,000. And that's per year renewable for all four years that you're at Webster. Um, so really generous scholarships. We don't have a different out-of-state tuition. Tuition is the same across the board at Webster. And we also offer competitive scholarships. Um, so if you click on this link right here, you'll see our competitive scholarships. Um, there are a couple on there that are actually full tuition scholarships. Uh, one of them is the Chancellor's. We gave away 10 Chancellor scholarships last year. Um, so we would do a really great job with that as well. And then of course, after scholarships, we will consider your FAFSA and your financial aid. And we also stack any outside scholarships that you're bringing in. And finally, I wanna mention that we are open for visits. So if you'd like to come see our campus and fall in love with Webster, you can go to webster.edu slash visit. Again, this uh, link to this presentation is in the chat. Please check it out. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Next, we will have the University of Oklahoma. Awesome. Okay. Um, my name is Lauren Quinn, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment for the University of Oklahoma. I work in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I'm here to give you a brief overview of OU. Um, so we are a very mid-sized university located in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, so approximately 22,000 undergraduate students. Um, so you still get that big um, public research institution um, and having the big public name as far as the sports programs, but a much smaller class size. On average, our class size is about 32 students and we have a faculty to student ratio of 18 to one. And we are only a 25 minute drive from Oklahoma City. So if you're looking to have um, that college town feel, but you also still wanna be close to a big city, we have that at OU. OKC has actually been voted on one of the most affordable cities to live and work, um, as well as one of the top cities for the young entrepreneurs. Um, so a lot of different opportunities for, for students in the Oklahoma area in general. We currently boast over 170 different majors to choose from. And whether you know exactly what it is you want to do or you have absolutely no idea, all of our freshmen start in one place and that's called University College. And that's to help bridge that gap from high school to college. 
Um, we have the one-on-one -on -one advising there. So someone will sit with you and help map out what your four years will look like at OU um, and help you get through that entire process. And one of the great things about OU is that you do not have to apply directly to a major unless you are auditioning for fine arts. Um, you declare your major on your application and you matriculate directly into that major upon um, attending OU. Some of our notable programs will be meteorology and severe storm research. We have one of the top programs in the nation there, as well as a top journalism college. We have a great broadcast journalism program where we have student run and operated shows. They are being anchored, produced, and everything is being done by our students. We consistently have one of the top petroleum engineering programs in the nation um, with one of only few, um, only a few oil rig simulators on a college campus worldwide. So we really like to hone in students having that hands-on experience before graduating from OU and going into the real world. We also have over 550 different student organizations, and that is anything from Greek life to intramural sports to organizations that deal within your major um, to student government or to just organizations that are random and students just want them on campus. We have Quidditch teams. I still have absolutely no idea what that is, but our students want it and so we have it. Um, so we just want you to have that home away from home feel. You are outside of class more than you are in class. So you still have to have things to do. We, we want you to feel home um, at OU. We are also a division one athletic institution and our football program currently holds, holds seven national championships and we are consistently on the road to eight. Um, we also have the 2020 softball champions um, at OU. Um, some of our other notable programs, gymnastics, we consistently have um, Olympians on our team. We have an amazing gymnastics team as well as world renowned golf, tennis, um, baseball, and a lot of um, different other athletic activities for our students. We do have um, a great study abroad program at OU. Um, we actually have two OU study centers, one in Arezzo, Italy, and one in Pueblo, Mexico. Um, and for instance, in, in Arezzo, we took an old monastery and converted it to dorms and classrooms. So our students are being able to take art history and see the art in person versus actually having to see it um, on a screen or in books or what have you. Um, you can go for a full year, you can go for a mini semester or a fall semester, you can go more than once. You just can't go your freshman year. On average nationally, about 25% of college students do some type of study abroad experience. At OU, we boast about 40% of our students doing some type of study abroad experience. And that's because we want you to have that global experience upon graduating that you can add to your resume. And we do offer scholarships to help cover um, any study abroad costs. So how do you get access to all of this? Obviously you have to apply. And we are a holistically reviewing institution, which means that we look at every aspect of your application. We do not have any automatic admission criteria. The largest part of your application review is going to be your academic rigor. So that's going to include your GPA, your test scores, if you are choosing to submit those because we are test optional, um, your class rank and the rigor of your coursework. Are you taking any honors, AP, pre-AP, dual credit type classes? Then we'll look at your engagement so what you do outside of the classroom, are you active in community service, sports, cheer, dance, church? What are you doing when you are not in school, as well as how interested you are and how you are showing your interest in OU? And you do have to submit an essay. You are given about seven different essay prompts to choose from. And what we're looking for is that you can follow basic essay structure, a clear and concise introduction body and conclusion um, to make sure that you can write an essay. We find that oftentimes students write like they text. So we wanna make sure that you can write an essay and you are encouraged to submit letters of recommendation. They are not required, um, but they do help to add extra points to your application. Once you are admitted to OU, um, you are granted an OU bound portal where you will have, it will be your one-stop shop for everything. Um, everything post-admission will be there. You can apply for housing, you can apply for employment, parking permits, everything, financial aid will be right there um, in your application or in your OU bound portal. When you are applying for admission, you are also applying for scholarships. So all of our merit-based scholarships are gonna be determined by your GPA coupled with your test score, either ACT or SAT. And to get more information on our scholarships, you can scan this QR code here. We do have campus tours Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. and on Saturday mornings at 9.30 a.m. You and your family can come up and visit OU and we would love to have you. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'd now like to ask everyone a question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And if you would answer the question in the order that you present it. Okay, great question to start things off. Um, what advice I would give is definitely everyone I think mentioned about going to see campuses and visit campuses. When you guys go visit campuses, um, make sure you guys are finding that connection point. Maybe that's with a tour guide, maybe that's an advisor. Um, we want you guys to feel at home for all of your years, whichever college you guys do decide to attend. So um, definitely go with an open mind anywhere you guys go, but hopefully y'all fall in love with that one place that you guys ultimately decide on. That's great. Um, and I agree. You have to go to know. Um, probably the advice that I would give is to get to know your admissions counselor. Um, they are a person that can be a great resource, getting you connected with various um, resources on campus and things like that. But in addition, um, get to know them a little bit more um, because a lot of times they are the ones that help recommend for scholarships. And so the more you get to know them, the more they can help you in that way. Probably one advice I would give is basically, yes, get to know your college campus, but also get to know the town that it is involved with. Get to know the different events on and off campus and actually uh, speak with all the students on campus if you can to get a sense of what college campus is going to be like when you're there. And this is going to be your home away from home. So you got to feel it. So definitely get to know the atmosphere when you're on campus. Those are great things and I would encourage all of that. One thing I would recommend doing is setting up a college email so you're not completely overwhelmed with, because um, we want to talk to you, we all want you. So make sure that you set up an email like Julie goes to college at Gmail or whatever. So when you're done and you've picked your college and you're ready to go, you can delete that email and keep your personal email. So that would be some advice that I would, uh, I would give. Um, I agree with everyone. Those are all great points. Um, I would add, advocate for yourself. Students often uh, feel shy or don't want to ask too many questions, but if there's something you need, feel free to ask us. If you need accommodations in college, let us know. We're here to help you with that. If um, financial aid is overwhelming, let us know. We can help you with that too. So just learn to, to speak up for yourself, I think is the biggest thing. You don't have your parents and your teachers and your counselors pushing you anymore. Um, so I think that's something to take away. All great advice. Um, and I do recommend um, once you start narrow, narrowing your choices down to visit those schools again, but I usually tell my students to try to visit during the week, um, during bad weather or the, like the snowy weather, see if you can actually see yourself there during um, when campus is bustling, when it's snow on the ground. And if you can still see yourself at that university, then that might be the place for you. Thank you everyone for that, those uh, great tips and advice. And thank you for joining us. And uh, when you close the window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you um, to view the session's recording. Uh, you'll be able to find this and the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Texas. Thank you.